I grew up in Minnesota, and I didn't actually know a single LGBTQ person, and I didn't think I was gay for a very long time, and it wasn't until I actually had access to a much wider community online that I started to find people that looked like me and sounded like me, and it really is upsetting for me to see that lifeline being threatened in many ways right now. I think there's kind of two camps. There's bad computer code and there's bad actors. So explain that to me. What kind of bad actors and how does this take form? I glad we've received reports of LGBTQ content being blocked on nearly every major social media platform. One of the things that we're seeing right now is a lot of transgender YouTube creators are being falsely targeted by the alt-right to have their accounts flagged and content removed. The biggest challenge of that is this is happening at mass scale. These are computers that are going through seeing these flags and automatically deleting content and blocking people. And and we as human beings have to go in and manually petition to have that content reinstated. So it puts us in a kind of man versus machine dynamic. That's fascinating. I mean, this idea that artificial intelligence is also at play here. Yeah, so when we're talking about artificial intelligence, what we're really talking about is decisions that are made about you over which you have no control. Right. And in the past, those are decisions that were made by another human being. Those were things like, do you qualify for a home loan? What is your credit limit? And what we're seeing happen now with artificial intelligence is we're taking that logic out of human brains and putting it in computers where they can really accelerate and amplify the decision-making process. Google invented this tool called Perceptive, and what it does is it really analyzes all the words that people are posting online, and it says how likely those are to be perceived toxic. And by that, I don't mean that Google thinks they're toxic. What I mean is Google thinks that those are gonna stir up a lot of conversation. I was actually just on that tool this morning, and if I put in the phrase, he is straight, that's only 13% toxic. If I change he is straight to he is gay, it's over 70% toxic. And if I change that to she is gay, it's nearly 100% toxic of a thing to say online. How does the algorithm pick up that that's one thing's toxic and, and one thing isn't? Well, I think there's two ingredients at play here, right? Artificial intelligence is built by people, and people have biases, thus artificial intelligence has biases. And the second thing is the data that's informing that artificial intelligence. If you want data for AI, you want the most amount of data you can have. And the internet is the largest catalog of human thought that's ever existed. But it's also the largest catalog of homophobia that's ever existed, and transphobia, and sexism, and racism. And bad AI is AI that doesn't account for the bias of the person that built it, or the bias of the data that they're putting in, and that can be a really dangerous and harmful output. But it also sounds like it's going beyond that. It's also like there's a kind of a war playing out online when you look at the alt-right. You say a lot of them are flagging a lot of this content, and there's a power in numbers there. So it almost seems like a bit of a game of cat and mouse. Exactly. I think engaging with the alt-right in cyber warfare is something that sadly has become one of the new tactics that you have to employ in digital media advocacy. So take me into these meetings. You go in, you meet with these tech companies. You worked at Twitter for a good amount of time. I've known people who have come in and out of Twitter. <laughs> Um, take me to these closed door meetings. What do you say to these folks who are in the room when you talk about these issues? The first thing that I start out by saying is technology like artificial intelligence is a complete game changer. It's going to shuffle the deck on every power structure that we currently know. And I mean financial, ethical, and because of that, we need to have a very robust debate around that. And we need to ensure that all viewpoints are a part of that debate. Like what kind of stuff should be banned or what kind of content is okay, like that kind of stuff? Yeah, we do get into a lot of specifics. So GLAD sits on Twitter's Trust and Safety Council. Recently, we found that Twitter was actually blocking the word queer, sensitive content. And queer is one of those words that there's a lot of different discussion right now. Like, is it okay to use? Is it not okay to use? And we find that a lot of times the conversation is in the nuance there. It's really about the context of the way that word is being used. And Twitter, to their credit, got that word reinstated, and now you can say that word on Twitter.